Yo, so I'm back with another video for you guys, and as requested, I'm going to be going over the Royal Marines exercises in training. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel below, hit the bell button, and like this video so you can get more content. So, what is a field exercise to start off with? If you're sitting there and you're thinking, what the hell even is a field exercise? Basically, to stimulate uh, war environments and to practice battle drills and basically get effective with being on the ground. There's a lot of elements that go into being on a field exercise and each exercise that you do in training more and more and more elements are going to be added in and more assessments are going to be added in each time so you're not just going to be chucked straight in at the deep end but as time go on they are going to get more and more intense because you'll learn more skills and you'll continue to do the things that you've been taught on the other exercises with more being added in. So these exercises can be vary from days to weeks to months sometimes and in Royal Marine training specifically there's a number of different exercises which start all the way from first step and go all the way to final leg. Now I'm not going to go over every single one of the exercises and tell you exactly what is in every single one because it's going to be different anyway from troop to troop from year to year and also you still need that sort of element of surprise and to be taught from your training team anyway. However first step um, is the first exercise that you'll go on and as it's kind of states because it's your first time in that environment it's a lot of um, personal admin and a lot of like getting used to the field conditions and how to survive in the field so that will be things from literally how to how to wash with it shown how to uh, maintain your kit um, how to cook for yourself and eat from rations and cook properly and effectively without leaving like ground time and stuff I'm not going to go into that too much. Um, that'll all be taught to you as and when necessary. So I do have a brain like a sieve. So I've written a little list here of the sort of stuff that does get added in over time throughout these exercises. So like I said, each exercise, more and more elements are going to be added in. So cam and con, the cam and concealment, you'll get taught that pretty early on. Maybe even on first steps, to be honest, where you will get taught how to come up properly for the environment that you're in and how to conceal. So you'll be using bits of the environment and attaching it to your kit so you're completely concealed. Say if you was doing a stalk um, and if you was doing, if you was crawling for a position, try not to be seen by the enemy and you'll get taught all of that. And then you will also be smashed with a lot of navigation stuff. So this will be a lot of classroom navigation stuff to start with. And then you'll be putting that into practice on the ground in the exercises where you'll probably start doing um, navigation in groups. And each person will take the chance to lead the group to a different checkpoint. And then that will progress further and further until you're doing night navs by yourself. Like I say, in the middle of the night, single night navs and they'll be timed and it'll be pass and fail. So really screw your head on and listen to your training team when they're trying to teach you about the navigation. So of course, there's gonna be, along with that, there's gonna be kit masters. So being able to maintain your standard of kit. So you're gonna be doing wet and dry, which you'll learn about. I'm not gonna go into too much of detail about that, but that'll be very fun. Um, yomping, you're gonna be doing a lot of yomping. Um, Again, that will start slow and it will soon ramp up. So you'll soon get used to yomping. Um, for those of you that don't know what yomping is, it's essentially taking your kit and going into the field. So you're not always going to be driven into the field. You're 90% of the time going to be yomping in and out the field and around. So your whole life is going to be on your back and you're just going to be walking, essentially. Um, tactically until you get to the position that you need to be in goes without saying um there's probably going to be a lot of correction fizz going on in the field as well because you're probably going to mess up at some point and even if you don't you're still probably going to be doing correctional fizz let's be honest obviously again as we're progressing forwards there's going to be loads and loads of battle drills going on breaking contact etc etc brekkies and you'll also do survival that'll be like um a whole not a whole exercise on survival but it will be a whole part so maybe a whole half of an exercise will be on survival um which for me my survival 
I thought I was going to really enjoy it because I love all of that survival stuff. However, because you're really pretty fatigued from doing that other exercise, or the first part of the exercise, it's a lot harder than I had thought. But still, once I got to the survival stage and we'd got all of our wood ready and everything, then it wasn't too bad. However, I was asked what was my hardest exercise. Now, about midway through training, I went on an exercise called Dig X, and it pretty much is how it sounds. So you go on exercise and you dig for the majority of that exercise. You are told you're going, you basically go into this big field. Um, obviously, the conditions dependent is sort of how hard it is really, but it's always going to be hard, but like it could be worse if you had conditions like I did. So it was absolutely pissing it down. So the ground was just like clay, basically. Um, but I'll rewind. So we deployed on this dig X two days early, I think it was, because we didn't perform to the highest standards as a troop, apparently, uh, for the previous exercise. So that meant we done correctional fizz for two days, harbored up um, in the woods about... I don't know, a couple of K away from uh, Dig X or maybe just a K away from Dig X. So we'd already been, not been thrashed. We'd already done correctional fizz for two days prior and then went straight into this Dig X where we was digging, um, digging trenches. This is what you have to dig. You have to dig a trench. So you'll split down into, we had three people in ours, in our trench. So... We was all digging, obviously, digging the trench. You have to dig it down. I don't know how, how much you have to dig it down. Maybe like five foot or something like that, between five and six foot. And you're given, um, like, what is it? I think it's like a piece of wood. You're given, like, a plank of wood to put over the center of it. So you dig down. You dig this big old trench out. And then you piece, add this piece of wood. And you basically have two sides here, the people on sentry. And then... Um, underneath is like a little tunnel so you can get to either side that's where the wood is there um, so basically these two people are sentry, this person sleeps this person gets up, takes him off, he sleeps this person gets up, takes him away, he sleeps and you just basically go around and around and around um, so yeah you're basically up for days on end um, digging in this swamp <laughs> and not only that you're in full resi so full respirator suit, um, C bar N suit. So you basically got this big rubber hazmat suit on. So it's very hard to already get around. And your mask is is on a lot of the time as well. Even whilst you're digging and everything. That's that's definitely the hardest exercise that I've done. Um, and when we was actually getting attacked, this is another thing that adds to why it was one of the hardest exercises. When we was getting attacked and we was defending our trench. Um, I was on one side, both the other lads were on the other side, and we was firing back, um, all going off. And then all of a sudden, because the ground was like clay, I don't know what triggered it or what set it off, but I was against the back wall because the trench width was probably, I don't know, about yay big. So I could take like two steps and I would be on the other side, if you know what I mean. Um, and essentially, that whole other side... I turned around to face that side. To put it into perspective, it's pitch black. We've just literally ceased fire. Um, big old firefight went on. And that entire wall just collapsed in on me. And I know that probably doesn't sound like a lot. However, that mud is super heavy. So that just collapsed in on me, crushed me down. I physically could not get out of that, especially with being in my suit and everything. I just could not push that off. So I had to call the lads from the other side over to my side to come and dig me out. And you can probably assume the state that I was in. I mean, the state that I was already in, sleeping in in that wet puddle anyway. But the state that I was now in, being completely submerged and having to be dug out of this clay. And my weapon as well. So that took a lot of cleaning. So yeah, after that, we then had a lot of correctional fizz after that. Um... I don't know how, how to word this really, but basically um, the numbers in the troop were high and we basically had a lot of correctional fizz until the numbers weren't so high. Um, so that was pretty stinking. However, having said all of that, all of you lot are now going to be draining. 
are very lucky because you no longer have a dig X. It's been replaced with another exercise, which I believe you do a lot of battle drills, slightly more normal exercise, you would like to call it. So you don't have to endure or go through any of that. Yes, you're still going to have to do the umping and everything, but you're not going to have to do that horrendous dig X because that no longer exists. That's a shame because I think that everyone deserves to feel the dig X themselves. But there it is, the exercises. Any questions, any comments, comment down below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, 